way or another. <clears throat> well, I don't know if anybody signed on yet. Not yet. Sure, they should. Right. Yeah, Sherry's been pretty regular. Mm -hmm. So is uh, Lynn. Oh, that, that's that Sherry just texting me right now. Let me my phone. Yeah. Surprised Lynn isn't here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You can't always make it. That's one thing about this one. If you miss a week, you don't really. Yeah. You, you just miss that chapter. It's not a. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're going to fall behind or anything. It's. Next week, if I come, I'll need a ride into. Um, well, my neighbor will take me in. My car gets inspected mm -hmm. Wednesday, so I need a ride into Warner's there by the cemetery. My neighbor will take me though. They're good neighbors. That's good. Guess the rain's keeping people away. It's a it's a downpour out there. <laughs> no, I told Scott. I think it was in the bathroom when it rained because I didn't even. It didn't rain long. Well, I'm in a mobile home. Mm -hmm. It didn't rain long. Went, oh, ours all wet. Well, Mr. Bunny was in the yard. I saw Mr. Bunny and then I saw that it was all wet. I had a laugh. Matthew gets up in the morning and he'll run about five miles every morning to stay in shape. And now that he's home, he takes a dog with him. Oh, my goodness. So, the dog's probably exhausted. Let, <laughs> he didn't want to get off the sofa. <laughs> I ain't going with him. <laughs> I, I, I'm making dinner and I let the dog out. He ate his dinner and he went out, wanted to go outside. So I called him. I said, you know, Come back in, and he got to the steps, and he just real gingerly come up the steps, and it was like that he kind of made a little hop to get in the doorway. <laughs> it was like you're sore, aren't you? <laughs> You've been running too much. He's not used to it. Oh my goodness! You have to tell Matthew to leave him home for a day or two, let him recuperate. Yeah. Uh, what happens if I have? A... Uh, we have lots Plenty of over there. Oh yeah. Just pick one. <laughs> and if you go down to the bottom shelf, you can choose a different uh, variety if you prefer. So. Is Sherry coming? Did she? She's yeah. There she is. Oh, she's coming on. There she. Hi, Sherry. She can't hear you yet. Hello. Oh, she has her sound. You're muted. I'm not muted now. There you go. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome. We're a short little group today. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Well, did it rain down there? No. You got a, I guess you call it a cloudburst because that's all it was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the yeah. sun was coming the windshield and then the rain was coming down and I'm like, I can't see anything. <laughs> all right. Tonight's reading is uh, Mark 10, 35 through 45. Did you say 35? Yep, 35 through 45. Okay, thanks. The request of James and John. We were talking about this one before. Mm. We might have covered it in our last podcast, but that was like 10 years ago. <laughs> Literal. It was here. It literally was 10 years ago. Well, we would have covered this one either 9 or 12 years ago because it's a three-year cycle. So oh, this would, would have come up mm -hmm. then. But, uh, yeah. You split the difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Larry and I were the race of beacons. <laughs> Then we decided that we didn't want to just the two of us sitting in our beds. Tasha was busy a lot of times. A lot of stuff going on, I guess.
This is a tough one. Hmm. All right, do we have a volunteer to read the first time? I'll read oh, the sure. first one. Okay. Hmm. Request of James and John. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And he said, to, they said to him, Grant us to sit one on your right hand and one on your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup I am to drink or to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. To sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to grant. For it is for those whom it was prepared. When the ten heard this, they became angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lorded over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not to be so among you. But whomever, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave to all. For the Son of Man can, came not to serve, but to be served. But came not to serve, came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom for many. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so, what is or what lines kind of stand out to anybody? So the part where, part where, where, where Jesus, Jesus said about, um, sorry, I hear myself talking. Um, Echo. Yeah. Uh, he said about, can you drink the cup that I must drink and be baptized the way I am? Or I be? And they all say, yeah, yeah, we can. You know, I was like, you know, like I don't know how they can do what Jesus did. And that stood out for me too. That uh, they, they, they quickly, but <laughs> I thought it was funny how he quickly said, uh, "You don't know what you ask." Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. They don't know what's coming down the pike, and yeah. but they, he asked him, "It's like, can can you deal with what I'm going to have to deal with?" He said. Well, what you're going to have to, but yeah, it's well, that, that's, your, <laughs> that's you know. kind of second part of it. Those few things right there, how they asked what they did to be seated and all. But I mean, well, drink of the cup I have to drink. And then he says, well, you don't know what you asked, but could you do this? And they're like, yes. But, <laughs> no. Yeah. It, and, he, and he quickly says, you don't know what you're asking. Because I, I don't know, do they, do they, re they really don't know what's going to happen to Jesus yet. He hasn't explained it. So, well, he said it a few times. If you times. look back right before this, I mean, right before this, three versions before this, the sea will go up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes. They'll condemn him to death. They will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, spit him, and flog him, and kill him. And after three days, they'll arrive again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, you know. Hey, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, uh, it, the disciples always come off as pretty dim, but especially in the Gospel of Mark, mm -hmm. Mark presents the disciples as just they just don't get it, and and they never get it until the resurrection. That's you know that they just never they never understand. Mm -hmm. 
they get blinders on. Mm -hmm. they, they see the miracles, they hear the teaching, they did it. But the bad stuff, yeah, no, he can he can handle he he can get that to go away. Well, it's it's because they're told to believe early. So if he tells them that something's going to happen or whatever, I guess would that be part of following him? Being loyal, saying yes, no matter what you do, we'll be with you. Not so much that I have. That, that's, that's a lot of that, mm -hmm. it's a lot of faith to, to them. That really that stood stood out to me that they were paired. I didn't know if they knew. Like he just, he said he did. You don't know what you're asking. Well, but even before that, they said we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Yeah, who do you think he is? <laughs> He's not a genie. <laughs> think maybe that's it. They said, "Hey, we're we're going out of our way for you." We what we? Yeah, they want to sit on his right hand and his at his right hand and his left hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about what about everybody else? Who who, who are you? <laughs> that makes me think of you know your kids when you go somewhere. I want to sit in the front seat. You know. <laughs> no, no, you can sit in the back. How oh, is it in your right hand? <laughs> and then the and then the rest of the ten find out about it, and they're like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> yeah, yeah th those lines really stuck out to me because of just the way it was explained here. You know, the, it kind of questioned me how much did the, they really know what they were asking. Mm -hmm. um, do they have that much faith that they say, you know, that, that much belief that, yeah, we'll, we'll be there with you. But then when he has the line, you know, well, you really don't know what you're asking. And then explains it to him that that was pretty clear. Then we get down the bottom where he calls them all in. And mm -hmm. if one of you want to be great, well, then you're going to have to be a servant to the rest. And well, you, I shall be first. Yeah, and it goes back to, I think, last week's, where we, you know, comes back into that. And then it becomes confusing again. <laughs> it really doesn't go on to explain much, but yeah, like it last, just... Last week, we never knew if, if the, the, excuse me, the one that had all the wealth, if he gave it up or not. It never said. Right. And followed Jesus. He never said what he did. So I was just wondering when he gets down to his last explanation and says that again, if they really understand again what you're telling them. Like you were saying earlier, I think that they, they had tunnel vision. They saw the good stuff. They saw Messiah. They saw God's here. They saw things are going to change. They some of them still probably saw the the Romans getting kicked out, you know, and just they didn't see the greater picture until resurrection. And like even probably after that, when Jesus kind of had to explain them, it's like, this is what it says. This is what I did. This is what it says. This is what I did. And kind of put, they finally put two and two together. Yeah, and after Jesus told them all that, they're not thinking about that. They're thinking about, you know, like the glory and the honor afterwards, you know, sitting next to him on his throne. You think they would be like, is you know, is there anything that we can do that, you know, will help you that you don't have to suffer like that? <laughs> but no, they're thinking of themselves. Yeah. <laughs> In the chosen the TV ver TV version, um, they actually are pushed to this by their mother. That's the way it's presented in Matthew's gospel. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. And, and the, the sitting at my right hand and left hand always jumps out at me because it reminds me of, you know, that that in a couple chapters, there will be somebody on Jesus' left hand and Jesus' right hand in his glory, which is on the cross. There's a thief on his left hand and another on his right. Um, and that's, 
you know, and I wonder, is that what he's talking about here? You know, to sit at my right hand, my left is not mine to grant, but, <laughs> but there will be some sitting there. Um, That's what they didn't understand is that in the, in the cross is where Jesus is glorious saying. Yeah. I think they, they're thinking of him on his throne, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. they're thinking of possibly an earthly throne. Mm -hmm. okay. You had the cupbearer, you had the advisors, you had the important people sitting next to the throne. That's not where he's headed. The other thing that, you know, the, the idea of being great and being a servant, um, as it has occurred to me this week, you know, as, as we're, we're seeing people trying to, to attain the greatest, um, elected position in the land and I'm not seeing too many servants <laughs> up there, but then I think about, you know, Jimmy Carter, who just turned a hundred and, um, you know, whatever you think of his time in office. He is without any doubt the best ex-president we have ever had. And he has lived the servant's life. I mean, he was still building houses in his 90s. Mm. Um, that's true. You know, that's somebody who, you know, and I don't really remember his time in office. I was pretty young. But um, but but since then, he has become an unbelievable servant. Somebody who could, I mean, he could, he could be making millions of dollars doing lecture tours and whatever, you know, but he... He spent so well, he much was, of his time, you know, with Habitat and with other groups like that. He wasn't, well, he was a politician, but they, they always put him down. He was a common peanut farmer. Mm -hmm. yes, and peanut he farmer. had that, that background of every man. And, and I think that's what made him the person he was. That's, mm -hmm. say, they, a lot of people I remember uh, didn't like him for that. Because he wasn't the politician that a lot of others were. He was more a common guy with the with good ideas, and that's what got him elected. And he was just and, but, you know, and, and had Watergate not just happened a few years earlier, maybe he never would have been elected. Maybe part of it was was the country was so sick and tired of politicians as usual. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I don't remember that time well. Maybe you do, but um Ghost of a memory. It's just not like, okay, this happened, that happened. I then... didn't really pay that much attention like I try to now. Yeah. I, 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 I try not to now. But, well, but, but, I, see, I, mean, but I definitely see him in his later years as yeah. living that servant right. lifestyle. Right. No, no yeah. question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, his wife even lived to be old. She did. Yeah. She just died last year, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were married 70 some yeah. years or something. Yeah. He's outlived two of his successors, you know. He's uh, <laughs> sure he doesn't have much time left, but mm -hmm. was there any other lines in there that anybody can pick out that is it in when he's talking about the, the being the last and the ruler should be the least? Maybe it's another version. Maybe it's another gospel. But doesn't he bring in bring in a child and say you must? Or is that the, that was? Yeah, that was a couple weeks ago. I mean, yeah, that, that's yeah. that's not far from here. That, mm -hmm. That's a different. That's it. That it's temple. That was. Yeah, but that's yeah. That's at the end of chapter nine. So it's not. I mean, you're not far off. And it's all connected. <laughs> it's all connected. But I just wasn't yep. sure if it was yep. here. And maybe a different version in yep. the gospel. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and we're and and we're going through the you know we're going through this section of Mark pretty pretty closely the last you know month or two and uh so there there's there's definite themes that keep coming up yeah um, you know. i mean again child a servant yeah. you know you don't expect the child that there's the first child shall lead them but you don't expect a child to be the one in charge so when you have a child who can uh, uh, another strange allegory but I was watching one of the videos from Facebook of, I think it's Britain's Got Talent, and they had these kids, and most of them were disabled, and they were singing this very, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I'm me, I'm here, mm -hmm. and it was just, not all of them had the greatest voices, but the sound was perfect, mm -hmm. and they were doing sign language because some of them couldn't speak well, mm -hmm. 
And there was this one little girl who had actually met Simon Cowell at a different event. And she was in the lead. She was up front and guiding a lot of them. And one more was... line here that I want to read out of mine, because so I think it was a little bit different. You know that the man who, mm -hmm. yeah, you know that the men who said, who are considered rulers over the heathen, mm -hmm. have power over them, and the leaders have complete authority. I think he's trying to say in that line. Is he warning them against wanting to be? Or the one in charge? I think so. What, what does he say right after that? That's the next thing. Um, yeah. Leaders have complete authority. Oh, yeah. Uh, not so with this, you. Yeah, this is... Uh, I keep reading the wrong line here. <laughs> this, however, is not the way that the it is among you. So he's telling it. He's speaking to the group there. It's not this way among you. So if you want to be, this is what you have to do. You got to work as a group, not just I'm in charge. Listen to me. This is what you can do. And this is this is after he makes Simon and Peter, right? Oh, yeah. When you think about it, Simon was probably the most mixed up of the bunch. <laughs> yeah, and this is something the church has fallen into over and over again throughout the centuries. You know, the church has, has gained political power and used it poorly. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and people refuse. in the, uh, you know, in, in people who proclaim themselves as, as, you know, faithful Christians do exactly this they lord it over each other and and our tyrants over each other i mean we've we've failed at this over and over again we we need to keep hearing it over and over <laughs> again i think you know there's certainly pat you know certainly you know it's it, there's there's a temptation for pastors to do that to to you know get a power trip from their position and um and lord it over the congregation and hope i don't do that but i know i've certainly known others who do mm -hmm. so <laughs> i ran away from a church where the pastor did that <laughs> Ironically, yeah. the pastor I ran away from was the reason I went to that church in the first place. It could be very charismatic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, when I came in, everything was great, and she was. I'll leave it where that it's like it became less the you know United Methodist Church of Lake Opaca and became the United Church of Linda, and I'm just like, you couldn't even like say, hey, why don't we do this and kind of adjust it this way? No, we're doing it this way. See, a lot of TV evangelists okay. remind me of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. There's only one I, I can't say I like, but I mean, I when I come across her, it's the female, I don't remember her name. She's very convincing the way she mm -hmm. speaks, but a lot of times when I come across a TV evangelist, I'll watch it for maybe 30 seconds and mm -hmm. move on. <laughs> And you look at the kind of houses some of these people have and oh, the lifestyles yeah. that they're leading, you know, oh, it's, yeah. it's, you know what, what are, what, what are, yeah, exactly. What, what are they in it for? You know, mm -hmm. it's, um, mm. yeah. wasn't it Oral Roberts who said you have to give me $5 million or God's going to take God's going to take me. And I'm like, isn't the goal for God to take you? Oh, Why are we fighting to prevent this? <laughs> that one, his, his wife had like hundreds of pairs of expensive shoes mm. and all kind of scandal oh, yep all right i'm going to make an attempt at reading this for the second time myself Try. <clears throat> then james and john the sons of Zeb zebedee <clears throat> came to jesus teacher they said there is something we want you to do for us what is it jesus asked them and he answered when you sit on your throne in your glorious kingdom we want to let we want you to let us sit with you, one on your right and one on your left. Jesus, Jesus said to them, you don't know what you are asking for. Can you drink the cup of suffering that I must drink? Can you be baptized in the way I must be baptized? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will be indeed 
drink the cup I must drink and be baptized in the way I must be baptized, but <clears throat> do not have the right to choose who will sit. I do not have the right to choose who will sit at my right and my left. It is God who will be give these places to those for whom he has prepared them. When the other ten disciples heard about it, they became angry with James and John. So Jesus called them all together to him and said, You know that the men who are considered rulers of the heathen have power over them, and the leaders have com complete authority. This, however, is not the way it is among you. If one of you wants to be great, he must be the servant of, all, of the rest. And if one of you wants to be first, he must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come down to be served. He came to serve and to give his life to redeem many people. Okay. How does this passage speak to your life today or now and why? He's not a popular person to quote, but I still remember Bill Cosby's himself routine. I'm not the boss of my house. I don't know how I lost it. I don't know where I lost it. I don't think I've ever had it. I've seen the boss's job and I don't want it. <laughs> and I can tell you right now, the company I'm in, I am the plant administrator. I put out reports. I every and it's like i put out reports i tell those people these people you need to fill out these forms these people need to fill out these forms and okay we're, we have this problem over here we need to get that done i don't have the authority to do middle east squat everything that comes from me comes from somebody else <laughs> you just channel it in the right and direction it's, and it's everybody else, well, tina's reporting tina's this and tina's the tina email and it's like tina's email but you got a problem with it go to frank and Frank is the, I, I will say he is also a servant leader. He will help whoever it is with whatever's going on. He doesn't reprimand and yell and scream. And I, I've made a few foul ups, loops and blunders here and there, but he's always been the support. He's not the one to come down on you. And he's such, he is so the glue that he sets this together. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, to be, it's like I, I even tell people, it's like the only way you can get this package filled out by this employee is to blame me. Blame me. I don't care. They're not going to. It's like they'll see me once in a blue moon. It's not actually coming for me. But if it gets the job done, blame me. <laughs> but it's just. I don't need to be the one in charge, but I like being. Like the. the fully involved. The, people, the, the no, exactly. Like the the cop, just like you're not the eye, you're the hand, you're the you're the nose, you're the you no, know, or no, the right hip. <laughs> being a part of it, being deep involved. It's like if there's something that I can do, that I can do this because of my computer abilities better than so and so. Hand it to me. I may not understand one bit of it, but hand it to me. I don't need to be in charge. Just mm -hmm. let me be in. Well, one thing I hear here is Jesus really, um, you know, speaking very um, counterculturally because the, the society that, that he lived in was a very rigidly stratified you know, society that, 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 that certain people were above other people who were above other people who were above other people. And it was really like, like you knew where you, where you were in the pecking order and you knew who you needed to kowtow to and who needed to kowtow to you. <laughs> And, and, you know, Jesus is saying here, like, you know, if you want to be great, you think that being great means the one at the top who everybody's, you know, bowing towards. Actually, to be great is to go to the bottom and serve all of them. Um, and I think, you know, our culture today isn't like that in a rigid way, but I think it's like that in a lot of subtle ways. I think we're always trying to figure out where we fit in with other people. I think that, I think, I think that kind of, it's probably human nature, you know, sinful human nature that we do that, that we, we, you know, figure out who are we better than and who is better than us. And, and Jesus, I, I hear him saying here, like, like that, that's, mm -hmm. 
that I, I'm throwing all that away. That's part of part of my plan is to throw all of that away. And um, and that's you know I think that's still countercultural today. Mm -hmm. I don't know when I read this, it leaves me with more questions than answers again. And it leads me to the question is like, like sometimes like well, why I'm here doing this is like, so I want a, more clarity. I don't always understand. So I need mm -hmm. to not just think it through in my head, but I need to hear what other people are. I need to think so it that, through in your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was looking forward to this particular Bible study because a lot of Bible studies, nothing personal. No, yeah. <laughs> a lot of Bible studies, you know, you read the Bible and the pastor says, well, this is what it says. Absolutely. Okay, cool. It's what it says to you, but maybe it says something different to me. It's, it's like we've got, you know, four or five people here. Yeah. And maybe, you know, you're, you're saying it's really complicated. I'm looking at it like, seems pretty black and white to me. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. It's like, you, you really think you can do this? Yes, we can. Well, you're going to whether you can or not but i mean when i look when i have to ask the question to this where does it fit into me mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. and that's the that's the puzzling part I, I know what jesus is saying to them and you know got a good idea what's going on well, how does that affect me now well, I think it, I think it affects me now because part, you know I'm I'm in the role of a leader. You know that's that's part of part of what what it is to be a pastor, and and I I need to hear this over and over again. You know to be reminded that um, you know what it is to be a leader in the kingdom, and it's not it's not what it is to be a leader in the in the world. It's a very different. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying before, the the at least the Catholic Church, you started from the first century church where people were all sharing. That's very communistic socialistic thing where this person needed this so that person gave it and this person needed this so this person gave it and well i'm not sure how long that actually lasted like but, I, no, I, no, I, but, I, but <laughs> when you look into yeah. like the development of the catholic church and the hierarchy yeah. and the yeah. there there it was a very loose service where now everything is very structuralized mm -hmm. it was a very loose like prayer groups small groups this that and the other thing and it just seems like it, it it turned into a lot like not necessarily us but but it became in more formal traditional places wasn't what was set up mm -hmm. it just seems like you know god says this and then we do that god says this and then we do that god says this and then we do that. <laughs> it's like okay we're always going left of center right of center when will we get it straight? Jerry, you have any thoughts on this? <laughs> I just got up and I, I had the same Bible as you do. I guess it was the same. And I was like, I wonder what the message says. <laughs> so I got, I got that. Um, that's good. Um, um, it kind of, this one kind of made it easier for me to understand that one that you read. It said, you've observed how godless rulers throw their weight around, he said. And when people get a little power, how quickly it goes to their head. It's mm. not going to be that way with you. And then it goes into them being servants. Um, that kind of, yeah. you know, got things straight in my mind. I was like kind of figure, trying to figure out what it meant on the other one. Um, but it, like we, we were saying, you know, how some people... You know, they become your boss, or you know, they think that you know you got to do everything I say. You know, <clears throat> their power trips. <laughs> I also find it interesting how he uses Gentiles in this instance to talk about how the, the way things shouldn't be, and yet in other instances he uses their own hierarchy as. You know the priests, the, all the all the Pharisees and Sadducees. They're always telling you what to do, but they always put everything on everybody else. They're telling you what to do, but they're not doing it themselves. But in this one, he's you know takes it a step back and says, "Those without God." I wonder if he's kind of 
Well, he's got such a cornucopia of that example. (laughs) (laughs) But that's an interesting point. Yeah, because it's it it does sound like the same. He could say the same about the Sadducees. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I have a question. Something. So the way your 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 verse was was worded, Sherry, made me wonder. My verse forty three says, "But it is not so among you." What do the rest of you have for the very beginning of 43? Not so with you. But but, but what's the verb there? Is it is it it but it it is, it is not. not they mind 43. This is however is not the way it is among the way you. it is. The way it is. It's, he doesn't say this is not the way it should be among you. He doesn't say, I don't want you to act this way. He says it is not this way among you. And it I, will not act this but way. But I find that yeah, well, I find that that fascinating that he's saying it in such a way that it's not. It's not so much a command as a statement. Yeah, you know, it's like you're not doing anything wrong. So yeah, they're like maybe a little special because it's not so. This is, however, is not the way it is among. Or is or is Jesus just holding this? Um, uh, you know that 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 this is the ideal that I want you to strive for, and instead of telling you to do this, I'm going to say that this is how you'll be doing it. You know mm-hmm. because. I expect you to, you know, I expect you to, 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 to reach this standard. I, you know, I, I just find it interesting that it's maybe it's how they've it's been present so tense rather than maybe it's hmm. how they've been so far as opposed to, but I mean, at the same time, they look to him as the leader. So mm-hmm. they're kind of equal among themselves with him as leader. Maybe that's how he wants it is that, you know, there's no leader here. I'm the leader. You're here. You're together. You're working. I'm the leader. Yeah. You want to be this co, you know, the co-leader, the sub-leader. Go back here. Well, he was a servant. Hmm? So he was a servant to them, and they were also servants to him. Yeah, and. Um... They, I'm washing of the feet. I, it's, it was just reminded of that how that that and that was such yeah. a but they tried such to a shock to them. It. Yeah, they they because that was like Jesus, you don't do that. You know, yeah. we, we wash your feet, maybe, but you don't wash ours. That's but that, that I think that's in a way that's that's Jesus enacting this, what he's talking about here. That's Jesus doing it, you know. Um yeah. He did not come to be served, but to serve. Tina, I like how you had such trouble getting that part out. Hmm? I, that when you were reading it out loud, that sentence trying to get that was the, you struggled to get that, and, and maybe that's just a matter of just it was it was kind of conf- just grammatically it's hard to do, of, it's but it's kind of, also. It's also it's not what we want to say. Like we don't want to say that. We, Jesus is here. We're supposed to serve Him. I, I, don't, I mean, don't, con- consciously I knew what it said, but my mouth kept on saying it the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not here to serve Jesus. He's here to serve us. That's weird. That's weird, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm. And that can't, that that's just that that can't be right. You know. Um, So, like, um, they're saying the passage, how does it speak to your life now and why? Is it kind of like, don't try and put yourself in another person's shoes? Um, Maybe in some cases you should. Yeah. Get their point of, yeah, like we're doing here, get other people's point of view. You look at it from their point. Mm-hmm. Maybe don't get so wrapped up in yourself. See what you can do to help others with their path. Don't worry about so much about getting ahead yourself. We help everybody to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I have a lot of movie quotes. 
the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. <laughs> Star Trek is always long. <laughs> There's a lot there to think about. Mm -hmm. A lot there to think about. Aren't they always a lot to think uh, about? So <laughs> The more you, Bible, I think we're here for. The, the, the more you look into this, just there's just so much more that comes out. Mm -hmm. It's like you were saying about who's serving who. It's like Jesus is there serving God. The servants are there serving Jesus, and it's like the pecking order goes down. Yeah, but is that even right? I mean, we usually Jesus serving them, you know. It's right, point, right. Yeah. Is Jesus serving us? Well, but maybe, been, but what does that mean? That doesn't mean we ask Jesus for whatever we want. And, but you know, then you, you, it means, you, you think of it that way, who's serving who? But then he has the line of, if you want to be first, you you need to serve everyone. If you, you know, so it's like one hand washes the other back and forth. I think Pete, like when he was, when he was alive and he was, he's teaching them. And while he's teaching the Disciples again, like chosen version. While he's teaching, the disciples are out gathering the food and getting everything, and they're doing the the mundane work, shall we say? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's like maybe they are serving him in the more mundane things, but he's serving them and giving them God's word. He's serving them and us and giving us God's word and you know the, the crucifixion. So it's like it's building up where they're helping him, but in the end, he helps them. It's, you know, come say, come saw, back and forth. So it's not like, like it, in the end it is, but it's like <laughs> while they're while he's there, it's back and forth. And to what you were saying about we can't just ask Jesus for whatever we want. It's if we need help with something. Yeah, that's not what he's serving there. means. Like it's not he's not he's not our personal assistant. He's yeah. Not our, <laughs> it's not our babysitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but we know like looking at the heading over there, it's like we know what he suffered, so yeah. he, we know he can understand what we're suffering. Yeah. So it's was it Jesus would never give you anything that he figured you couldn't handle. Did we cover that in one of the? I forget. Uh, I've heard half the truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that. Yeah. Was I, mean, I think, I think the, the trouble with that is that it makes it sound like all suffering is given to us by God. Yeah, and I'm not well, sure yeah, that's that's, that's, yeah. that's the case. I, I I think what is true though is that no matter what suffering we have, God will give us the somehow will give us support, support and give right. us what we need to get through it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's, it's the first half of it that says God will never give you anything you can't give it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure God gives us pain and suffering. Like, yeah, it's in a broken world, but mm -hmm. I like that half truth book. Yeah, I still have that. Yeah. Well, who would like to read for a third time? I'd like to hear the message. Yes, <laughs> that's right. yeah. Yeah. Say it, Sherry. What I'd like to hear that one too. Okay. Um, <laughs> excuse me. James and John, Zebedee's sons, came up to him. Teacher, we have something we want you to do for us. What is it? I'll see what I can do. Arrange oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> it. Arrange you got all the vernacular. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Arrange it, they said, so that we will be awarded the highest places of honor in your glory, one of us at your right, the other at your left. Jesus said, you have no idea what you're asking. Are you capable of drinking the cup I drink, of being baptized in the baptism I'm about to be plunged into? Sure, they said, why not? <clears throat> Jesus said, come to think of it, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized in my baptism. But as to awarding places of honor, that's not my business. There are other arrangements for that. When the other ten heard of this conversation, they lost their tempers with James and John. Jesus got them together to settle things down. You observed how godless rulers throw their weight around, he said, and when people get a little power, how quickly it goes to their heads. It's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. 
Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not to be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for many who are held hostage. It's a laid back version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, The arrangements. Um, Okay. I've already moved arrangements for my funeral. (laughs) Through this passage, what might God be calling us to do or change this week? Jesus, take the wheel. To not. Take these things so lightly, like we're just kidding about arrangements. That you know, it's, uh, it's a little deeper than that. Much deeper than I should say. A little much deeper than that. Maybe reverse some of the things we say and do. You know, like, well, like. Instead of waiting for somebody to call you, you call them. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, mm-hmm. or send a card or whatever. It, the, way, the way you're talking reminds me of, of what I've heard about, you know, that a, a good butler knows what what the master oh. wants before the master even knows what he wants like a, like a good servant is is someone who you know can predict and just just proactively do things but without, without them even knowing that that's kind of what i'm hearing you say that you know, if we're going to be a servants to one another you know that's another we need to take the initiative awesome. yeah yeah absolutely mm-hmm. Everything I love butlers is from books and movies. Like I don't, I don't have any personal experience yeah. either as or having a butler. Sometimes you feel like yeah. a butler, right? Yeah. 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 Sometimes I feel like a chauffeur in my own home too. Yeah. <laughs> you get a license plate that says, you know, uh, mom's bus. Yeah, yeah. mom's taxi, dad's bus. Yeah. Me, it's more realize I'm not the one in control. I'm not the one in charge. I can go so far. I can get such done. And like I said, with the office, I don't want to be in charge. But there's a lot of things in my life that I try and be in charge. And maybe it's not my place in some cases. Maybe I need to take charge more of me and less of. Just let go. Oh my God, that's hard. Mm. It's a cliche, but it's hard. It's hard. Keep rereading the line. If you want to be first, you must be the slave of all. I don't still fighting with that to see what it might mean to me but it, it the one line that i just keep rereading for some reason i guess you could say i don't want to be first so i'm not going to do anything <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to be first jesus it's like you can even at work i i i'm a slave to all the work because everybody that needs something comes to me so it's like there you go. Yeah, I, I, you know, whatever you yeah. need, yeah. I take care of it. Yeah. I'll fix it. I, you know, I'll end up doing it. Or, uh-huh. you did but this that, that doesn't mean I want to be yeah. first either. It's just, yeah, trying to put some of these verses into my daily life and word. What is it uh-huh. telling me? And, and maybe these verses are directed at people who have this drive to be first. You know, this is telling you, like, all right, you have this drive to be first. Here's how you need to to adjust you know, to, to adjust that in a different direction. And maybe for those of us who don't have that drive, maybe this doesn't speak to you. Can we send this to the presidential candidates? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. My no comment. You don't, you don't, no comment. don't discuss. 
politics at church, I guess. Mm. Kind of, you, you can, can but well, I yeah. don't feel like it tonight. No. <laughs> you have the thing where they say don't, don't mix yeah. religion and politics. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's so hard to listen to each other. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. Um, Nobody wants to compromise. It's all wheeling and dealing. And making it sound, make, making what you want sound good to the other side, even though it's still nothing what they want. You know, but maybe maybe this is something that starts, you know, smaller. Wouldn't it be interesting if whenever a new supervisor is elected in the township or, or you know, the school board director or something, you know, what if, what if you sent them a, a, a nice letter saying, you know, hey, I, congratulations, I'm praying for you. Um, I just wanted to share this wisdom from Jesus with you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't hurt. Yeah, I mean, and that's, you know, um, maybe you start to look like that. Um, I mean, how would John Birmingham hear that? I don't know. Um, mm. like he kind of tries to be, so I think, you know, the way he's always out there and getting videos made. and Yeah, he's helping yeah, with... He's trying. He's, definitely, he's trying to be a he's servant, still, yeah, you know? He's uh, helping with uh, someone in the village. Of, that's what I mean. I mean, the, I think, uh, and, and it's funny when you when you do something like that, if you say something like that, you never know. Sometimes you get quoted the next line back at you. Well, yeah. yeah. If they're, you know. I'm a neat idea, actually. You know, I, I don't think it would help anything to send it to the presidential candidate. No. Like, but, you know, it's very helpful. And response. <laughs> if you get that. Thoughts from Prince of Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Sincerely, the dwelling in the word group, Prince. <laughs> Do your best to try this. Mm -hmm. We print it on these word word advertisements we get in the mail every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> send them out. Over the 30, 40 emails you get. Mm. I had a thought here and now I lost it. <laughs> Sherry, you have any comments? I can't. I'm like you. I always think of work. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you spend a lot of your waking hours, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like um, I try to help people, you know, even if I'm not asked, you know, if I see somebody struggling or if they're falling behind, you know, getting something done. And if I have the time, sometimes even if I don't have the time, I find myself helping somebody finish something, you know, and they don't even ask for the help and you know, I think, you know, that way, you know, we're, we're all servants. I think we should help people. You know, if I see, you know, somebody in another store, you know, I try to, you know, help them. You know, if you sometimes people think I work a giant or something, you know, <laughs> they come up to me and ask questions and I help them. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, or I help the one time the lady was coming out, she, um, she had a walker and there was like a shelf on her walker and she had all this stuff that she had bought on this shelf and I felt so bad for her. So I grabbed one of my reusable bags and I went over and I said, here, let me put this stuff in a bag for you. It'll be easier for you and you won't drop anything, you know, and my daughter's looking at me like, why did you do that? You're so weird. You know, I, said, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't yeah. want to see her drop all this stuff and have to struggle to pick it up, you know? You know, I, I look around, I guess, to find people to help. <laughs> I don't know. I'll generally see someone who's like five foot even. And I have to read yeah. something at the top shelf, and I'm just like, yeah. yeah. Just, and then I'll turn into it's like, okay, you're looking for this. I'm looking for that. You look over there. I'll look over <laughs> here. Yeah. We'll find where I find people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Stuff. Many hands, light work. I remember mm -hmm. Renny. Many many years ago, I don't remember which grocery store it was in. It was when Blue Ridge was in Bangor yet? Remember that? Mm -hmm. And that shut down in 1985. Right. Mm -hmm. I was in the grocery store, and someone I knew from work was ahead of me. And there was a lady went around the corner, and she dropped it was a ten dollar bill. Picked it up and put it in his pocket. Uh. <laughs> wow. And. It, yeah, I didn't really know who she was to track her down or anything, yeah. you know, but th I mean, I was appalled. Yeah. My yeah. coworker that he would. And does it right she, in front of you? There's no dropped, shame. Yeah, yeah. She dropped it, so I picked it up. Mm -hmm. And another time, uh, we, 
friends of ours we were camping with, um, uh, she, they yard sailed. So we stopped by their camper and, yeah, how'd you make out today? Oh, I did really good. I said, oh, yeah, what'd you get? Da -da 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 -da. She said, and then she said, I found this $50 bill. Hmm. So she kept it. Mm -hmm. Now, wherever the yard sale was that she was, I would have gone to the person who had this in the charge of that sale. household. Mm -hmm. And I would have said, I found this. Maybe somebody will come back for it. You do with it what you want. Because mm -hmm. she had no way of knowing who dropped it when. I would not. And then and that changes a friendship a little bit, you know, when you see somebody do that. I mean, if you find a $10 bill and it's out in the parking lot and there's nobody near yeah, you. What do you got? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But if you're, you see the person. See, you see it yeah. fall out of someone's hand. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did that one time. Yeah. Matthew was little. We were walking through the mall and there's a bunch of teenagers walking ahead of us. And I seen the one girl, she pulled something out of her pocket and money fell out. Oh, and she didn't realize it. So I ran up quick because it was pretty crowded. I kind of stepped up, picked up the money, and I walked up to her. Right. I said, excuse me. And they turned around. I was like, Who are you? they were freaked <laughs> out. Like, yeah. this old man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was like, it was like she looked at me very weird. And I said, no, you just dropped this. I didn't even know how much it was. I had just seen it fall out. Right. Just, up, And I said, you just dropped this. He's like, thanks. Like, kind of took it from me, like away from me now <laughs> oh, for it was like well i was trying to be nice but yeah just the I, vibe i got from her was like you're creepy get away <laughs> amazed because twice i mean this is years ago but two different occasions i have a red wallet and i was shopping at home depot that has the orange carts um, i took my wallet it's in the cart i took all the things out of the cart i drive away all it is still in the cart well, in times, I got a phone call from Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Apparently, their cart kid yeah. found my wallet. Yeah. Everything was in yeah. it. Yeah. I, I was like, I didn't even know who did it to give him like a tip or something to say thank you. I got a call once. Um, it, was, it was shortly after we moved here um, that and I didn't know who this person was. She said, I think I have your wallet. I'm like, what? It turns out apparently I, I I guess I had like you know gone out to my car and just like put my wallet on top of my car for whatever reason and just left it there because she found it in the ditch right around like like not far like in front of Kathleen's like house. Like we went around, around the corner and it went off. Down, right? down, 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 down around Kathleen's house and um and she found it like in the ditch and and what she did was she went through it until she found something that like she was with my business card or something and I and called the number. And, you know, she and she was still waiting down there when I got down there to, you know, to, to get it. Oh, and, uh, oh. you know, I mean, what would anybody else, what, I mean, somebody would, would have just taken the money and tossed it or just ignored it or whatever. But she, you know, that was that was really, really kind of her. I, yeah. I don't know what I would have done. You know, I, I would have, I mean, it's, I, I wouldn't mind so much losing the money out of my wallet. It's losing all the, the credit cards, yeah, like all that, stuff. all that stuff. I don't carry that much cash. You know, I could lose 20 bucks, but oh, all that hassle. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. It was so kind, and, and there was nothing missing, you know. Huh? Did that with my cell phone. It flew off the top of my car. Oh. Uh -huh. and, I, and I was freaking out. I was down in uh, like 20 minutes away at work. And my friend actually did find my phone for my phone on her phone. Like, and it was Paul. like... Five miles, not no, like a half mile away from my house. Oh. And I'm driving around that neighborhood and driving around, and I actually set the alarm off. And I must have annoyed whoever found it because it literally was up a tree. It wasn't up a tree. It was just like a six foot at the six foot mark, and it was sitting there in the bend of the. <laughs> That's not where you left it. No, that's not where it flew off the car yeah. were walking walking by where i was driving and they picked it up and they brought it home it was, and the alarms okay. started going off and they're like i'm not able to just <laughs> oh it's like i found i found i got the phone i'm like okay he's probably been annoyed because this thing has been going off for three hours and i took it and i got a card and i put a little gift card in it and i stuck it in the exact same oh, tree. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's just <laughs> nice but that yeah I that's guess. that's what it is i guess that's what it is to be a leader is you you you, you do that you, you you leave the phone in the tree you call the person with the wall you know you do that's what it's to be a leader a servant leader i guess yeah you 
well, like Sherry said, you can put yourself in somebody else's shoes now and then. You get it from their point of view. I mean, the thing was totally smashed, but just having oh, it was, the phone, yeah. you know, like having it so I could change it and nobody else would have my contacts yeah. and my, you know, Apple wallet and everything else. Like you're talking about wallet. Yeah. Same idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, do we have anything else that uh, comes up? Sherry, anything? Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, well, just that these places have already been prepared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not our choice. Right. So that brings up the concept of what's free will and what's preordained. And where do you draw the line? And there's no line in sand, one way or the other. Well, Pastor, would you like to do a prayer tonight? Absolutely. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for all of the ways in which you have served us. We thank you for, for Jesus, the great servant who gave his life for us. Pray that we might serve each other. We might serve you and serve one another and together might, uh, might be the servant leaders you're calling us all to be. Our Lord in Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. I was just thinking um, it's a good thing you know we should be happy we don't have to give our lives for everybody mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah although we're called to give our lives in different ways I think but not that not that way not yeah. that way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you Sherry. thanks Sherry see you bye. soon bye. Yep. bye <laughs>